Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to learn how to customize our charts on the Thinkorswim mobile app. This is going to include stuff like adjusting the time frame, adding and removing studies, drawing trend lines and support and resistance lines, and changing the overall chart style itself. Now, starting off with the first one there, adding and removing studies, it's actually quite simple to do. First off, we have to make sure we're actually at a charts page, and in this case, we're looking at a square chart, and currently you can see it's trading for $192.93 a share. If we look at the chart itself, you can see I'm looking at a 20-day, one-hour chart, which means I am currently looking back 20 trading days, and each one of these green and red candles you see on your screen right now represents one entire hour of trading. Now, in order to add studies, it's actually quite simple. All we have to do is click on the chart itself, and pretty much anywhere on the chart. Once you click on it, you're going to see a little menu pops up on the left-hand side. That's what that little white box is. Inside of that white box is all the icons we can use to actually adjust the style for our chart or add or remove studies. But the one we're going to focus on is the one second from the top. It looks like a little science speaker or a flask. All we have to do is go ahead and click on that. From there, it's going to bring up our studies menu. And this is where we're actually going to add or remove our studies. Now at the top there, you see a little search box. And that's used if you actually know the name of the study you want to look for. So that's the easiest way to do it. Or you can scroll down to the categories and search for something based off of momentum. We could go ahead and click on the momentum studies box. Or we could go back and look for trend studies. We could go ahead and click on that and maybe use one of these. But in our case, we actually know what we're looking for. So we're going to go back and use the study search box at the very top. From there, the very first one we're going to add is going to be RSI. So we're going to go ahead and type in RSI in here. And you can see it's the second from the top. And all we have to do is click on the little green circle with the plus sign in the center of it. Once we click on that, we can see it's now added to our chart. That's what that is up at the very top. If we were to hit done right now, you can now see RSI at the bottom of our chart. That's what that little purple line is. Now the default for RSI puts those horizontal lines at 70 and 30. Above 70 would mean the stock is overbought. Below 30 would mean the stock is oversold. Now for me personally, I don't like the way that this study looks on my chart. It's kind of hard to see with them being so similar in color. So what I wanna do is go ahead and click on the chart itself, go back to the studies icon, Remember, this is just the same screen we were on before. And I want to click on the little gear icon to the right of the word RSI. This is going to allow me to edit the study. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. Up at the top, you can see all of the settings with this study. First off, you can see it's a length of 14, which means this is a 14 period RSI. You can see my overbought and oversold are currently 70 and 30, just like we talked about a second ago. I could even change those if I wanted to. I could make that instead of 70, be 80. And instead of being 30 for oversold, we could make that... 20. So I'm basically just moving those horizontal lines on my chart in here. Now down below, I also want to change the color or the overall appearance of this study. So I'm going to click on the RSI line, which looks like a bright pink line. We're going to click on the color at the very bottom, that big pink box. We'll go ahead and click on that. And in this case, I'm going to make my RSI line like a bright yellow. So we'll go ahead and click on that and we'll go back to the study. I'm also going to make my oversold and overbought indications a little bit different. Instead of being purple, I'm going to make them um, let's say this bright orangish reddish color. And I'm gonna do the same exact one for oversold right here. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm actually gonna go back and we're gonna hit done just to see what this looks like. And now you can see RSI looks quite a bit different. First off, I've changed the actual levels, the uh, overbought and oversold levels from 70 and 30 up to 80 and 20. And you can see I've changed the actual color of the lines themselves, so it's a little bit easier to make it out. Now, just to get a little bit more experience with this, we're going to add a few more studies. So let's go ahead and click on the chart again. We're going to go ahead and click on the little sign speaker on the left-hand side. And this time, we're going to add the 50 period and 200 period moving averages. So we're going to come up here to the study search box, and we're going to type in the word simple for simple moving average. You can see there it's the second from the top. We'll go ahead and click on that little plus sign next to it. And since I want to add the 50 and the 200, we actually need to add it one more time. So we're going to go ahead and search for it again hit the little plus sign next to it. And now we've got both of them up there. But remember, I need to edit them. So we're gonna edit the first one first. So we'll go ahead and click on the gear icon next to it. And I'm gonna change this one from a nine period moving average to a 50 period moving average. And I'm also gonna change the color of the line. So where it says green for SMA, we're gonna go ahead and click on that. We're gonna click on the color. And this is just personal preference, but for me, I like a, like a tealish color. So we'll go ahead and add that and we'll go back to the study. Everything on there looks good, so we'll go back. And we just need to edit the second one now. So we'll go ahead and click on the gear icon of the second one. We're gonna go ahead and change that from nine to 200 this time. We'll go ahead and hit done. And we're gonna change the color from green to gold. We'll go back to the study and we'll go back once again. 
Now you can see up there I've got RSI still, and I've got my two simple moving averages, which we have just edited to be 50 and 200. So now when I hit done up here, we can see both of those indicators have been added to our chart. We've still got the RSI down below, but now we've got the 50 period moving average, which is the blue line, and the 200 period moving average, which is the gold line. Now you'll notice I keep saying period moving averages or 14 period RSI, and that's because it's entirely dependent on the chart that we're looking at. So in this case, we're looking at a 20 day, one hour chart, which like I said before, means we're looking back 20 trading days, and each one of these green and red candles represents one hour of trading. So the periods in this case is a one hour period. So in the case of the simple moving average lines, this is the 50 hour moving average versus the 200 hour moving average. And the RSI down below is the 14 hour RSI. Now in order to change that, we have to change the overall chart itself. Now to change the time frame, we simply need to click on the letter T up in the top left. From there, your favorite time frames are gonna pop up. You're gonna see the ones I use most commonly. One day, five minute, one day, one minute, five days, five minutes. And all we have to do is click on one of those to change it. So in this example, let's look at the bottom there and click on one year, one day. I have now opened up a one year chart. So I'm looking back one entire year of time. And each one of these green and red candles represents one entire day of trading, which also means I'm now looking at the 50 day moving average versus the 200 moving average up at the top. And then down below, that's the 14 day RSI. Now, depending on how actively you're going to be trading, if you're day trading, if you're swing trading, that's obviously going to impact the chart style that you use or time frame that you use. But this is how you're actually going to do it. You simply click on the time in the upper left hand corner and then simply select the time frame you want to go to. Now, if you don't see it here, obviously you can create something new, but these are my favorites. So if we wanted to create something new, we would simply click on time frame down below. Now from here, let's say we want to look at a 10 year chart for square. We're already on the right spot. We're on a daily aggregation. We're going to change the interval from a yearly period to 10 years. So we'll go ahead and scroll to the right quite a bit. And instead of being a one day aggregation, I'm going to change it to a week aggregation. And if I wanted to add this to my favorites list, let's say I'm going to use this pretty often. We could always hit the little star next to it. So it shows up here from now on. Now getting out of that, you can now see that I am looking at a 10 year chart. Each candlestick represents a one entire week of trading. So now at the top there, I'm looking at the 50 week moving average versus the 200 week moving average. And you're going to see that that yellow line does not go on forever. And that's because there's not 200 weeks prior to that ending point right here. Basically square was not a publicly traded company for long enough to go back any further than this for that, for that moving average. So just as a little recap, remember to change the time frame, we simply need to click on the letter T up here in the upper left hand corner and to add studies. All we have to do is click on the chart anywhere to bring up the chart menu. Then we click on the little sign speaker on the left hand side. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is actually drawing trend lines. So the way that you do that is similar to the other way is you click on the chart to bring up the little chart menu. The drawing tools are going to be on the left at the very bottom. It looks like a little pencil stick icon. Once you click on that, a little menu is going to pop up on the right saying, do you want to create a new drawing or do you want to remove drawings? So in this case, we want to create a new one. So we'll go ahead and click on new from there. You can see all of the drawings I have available to me. Trend lines, price level lines, time levels, text notes. And you can see there are quite a few of them. So we're not going to go through all of them. We're really just going to focus on the trend line and the price level line for today. So in order to create a trend line, we'll simply click on the trend line, the top left one. From there, we just need to select our two anchor points, basically our starting point and our end point for the trend line. So we're just going to do this randomly. We're not going to pick any two specific points. We'll just click here and click up here. From there, you can see the outline for the trend line has been created and I've got a little menu at the bottom. I can either choose to cancel this drawing. I can undo the drawing. I can edit the properties of the drawing. That would be changing the overall color, the appearance, the entry and the exit points for those two anchor points, or I could hit done if I'm just happy with the way it looks. So in this case, we'll go ahead and hit done. And you can see my trend line has been added and it's a kind of thick red line with like an arrow on the right hand side. But if I wanted to change those properties, maybe I wanted this to be a white line with two arrows, or I wanted it to be a dashed line. I could always change that. So the way to do that is simply click and hold down on the trend line itself. And that's going to bring up the menu on the bottom again. From there, we're simply going to click on properties. And at the very bottom, we're going to change the color of the line. We're going to change it from that solid red line to a white line. I also said I want both arrows. So we're going to go back up to the very top where it says arrow type, and we're going to make it say two sided. You can also see some of the other settings. Maybe you want it to extend forever to the left. That would be left extension. You want it to extend forever to the right. That'd be right extension. And you've also got the beginning and end points for the trend line itself. If you wanted to adjust that, 
Now lastly, we could also save this as a default. So if we always wanted our trend lines to look exactly like this going forward, we could say save as default. So let's go ahead and do that. Save as default and we'll hit save. Now once we hit done, we're gonna see that this trend line is now a white line with two arrows on either side. But if we create a new drawing, and again, we do that by clicking on the chart, going to the drawing tool, which is a little pencil icon. We wanna create a new drawing. This one is going to be a trend line once again. And if we click a, another two anchor points and hit done, you're gonna see it looks exactly the same as the last one because this is our new default, a white line with two little arrows on either side. Now keep in mind, that's the default for the trend line. That does not apply to your other drawings, your Fibonacci's, to your support and resistance, to anything. It only applies to the trend line. So if we wanted to create a support resistance line, we could go ahead and click on the chart again. We're gonna say we wanna create a new drawing. So we'll go ahead and hit new here. This time we're gonna click on price level, looks like a little dollar sign with a line below it. And we're gonna make our two anchor points once again. Let's say we wanted to do here and here. We'll go ahead and hit done. And you'll notice that this one is a kind of orangish line and it puts a label on the right hand side. If I wanted to change that going forward, again, adjust the settings. All we have to do is hold our finger over the top of it, look down below at the menu that pops up and we'll go to properties. On this one, I'm gonna change it from orange to, I don't know, let's say green in this case. Instead of being a solid line, I'm gonna make it a long dash line. I want it to always extend to the right going forward. And I think that that works. We'll go ahead and leave it as that and we'll save it as the default. Now going forward, if I were to create a new support resistance line, so let's go ahead and do that. Go to new, we'll click on price level once again and let's draw another support resistance line. Go ahead and hit done. You can see it's the exact same as the previous one. It's a dash green line and it extends to the right forever. So you'll notice creating a drawing in here is not too difficult, but it will take a little bit of practice to get the hang of it. And once we're done with these and we want to get rid of them, we just have to click and hold down just like before. We could then simply click on the little X button to the right of the label and that'll delete it. Just doing that one more time. Again, just click and hold down with your finger and hit the X button. And again, that deletes the drawing from your chart. Now, one of the last things we're gonna talk about is changing the overall settings for the chart itself, basically changing the style of the chart. You'll notice right now I'm looking at a candlestick chart. I do not have the volume bars anywhere on here. And I've got a little bit of an extension area on the right-hand side. If I wanted to change some of those settings, all I'd have to do is click on the chart again, just like always. On the left-hand side, you can see my little menu, but this time we're gonna click on the little candlestick icon at the very top. This is your style menu. From there, you can see some of the styles I've created. Clearly, I mistyped and I've got stuffy one instead of study one. I've got three month day, one year week, five year month, but each one of these is a different style and it could have a totally different appearance to the chart itself. So if we wanted to change one of these, we simply have to click on the gear icon next to it. From there, it brings up the chart style menu. I'm gonna go ahead and correct this one. We'll just name it S1 in this case. We're then gonna look down below and I'm gonna first off change the chart type that we're looking at. Right now you can see it's a candlestick chart, but if we start clicking on those right arrows, you can see that it changes the type of the chart. Now it's a line chart, now it's an area chart, candle trend chart, Heikinashi, bar chart, and we're back to candle. So let's say we did want to go to a line chart. We'll go ahead and hit the arrow to the right, go to line chart. We also want the volume bars to be displayed. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this little check mark box here and make it green. I also want the calendar events to be displayed. So we'll go ahead and click on that as well. I do not want to have the extended hour session turned on for this chart, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that expansion area to the right, basically that space I have to the right of my chart. So we'll go ahead and leave that. It's currently 20 bars. And I think I'm happy with this one for right now. It's a one day, five minute chart. So we'll go ahead and leave that with these studies on here. We'll go ahead and hit done. And we're gonna hit done again. You can now see my chart is completely different. It's now a line chart. I still have those same studies though and same drawings that I had before. You can also see the volume bars, which are those kind of gray bars in the background. And down below, you can see the calendar items. So these are the earnings announcements. And if I click on it, it'll actually tell me what it was. In this case, it was the earnings announcement on February 26 at 3.05 and the conference call if I wanted to listen to that, listen to the CEO and CFO talk about Square's earnings for that, that uh, quarter. If I go to the right of this one, there was one that had three on it. We could go ahead and take a look at what that was. So for some reason, it just listed the conference call twice, but again, you get the same idea. You just have to click on the calendar item to see what it was for that day. Now, what's cool about this is if I wanted to set up a bunch of different studies on different chart styles, I could very quickly go between them. So let's say, for example, I wanted the simple moving averages on one of my charts, but on the other one, I just wanted RSI. I just wanted like a blank slate with only RSI on it. What I could do is set up one of my chart styles to accommodate for that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my chart. I'm gonna go back to the style menu, which is those little candlestick icons. From there, I'm gonna adjust the three month daily style. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. We're then gonna go back and click on the gear icon to change the style. On this one, I do want it to be a candlestick chart. I want it to have the volume displayed. I still want the calendar items. And I'm gonna come down below and start adding the RSI just like before. So come down to the bottom where it says studies. We're gonna add a study. This one, we just wanted RSI on it. So we'll go ahead and search for that and hit the plus sign. You already know how to change the settings. So we're not gonna change the settings on this one. We'll just leave it as that default, like purple lines. And we'll go back to the style. We're gonna go ahead and name this one RSI, just so we can remember it. And we'll go ahead and hit done. So now on this chart, you can see it is a candlestick chart. I do have the calendar items down below. And all I have studies wise on this one is the RSI. Now, if I wanted to change this, let's say I wanted to very quickly go back to my line chart with those simple moving averages on it. I just go ahead and click on the chart, come back up to my style icon and click on test one. From there, you can see I very quickly went back to the previous chart that we had just looked at. So you can set up a few different styles so you can have it set up the way that you like it and then very quickly change in between them to look at the studies that you wanna see or the trend lines you wanna see, that kind of stuff. Now, the other little tools inside of that chart menu, if we look at them, are not that useful. You're not really gonna mess with them very often. The eyeball icon is basically what you wanna see on your chart currently. So if we go ahead and click on that, you can see it's currently gonna show me the open positions I have, the open working orders I have, any alerts that I have set on Square, studies and drawings. But if I didn't wanna see the studies, I could very quickly undo that and my studies disappear if you notice that. If I click on it again, my studies will pop back up to the chart. If I had any drawings on here, I could quickly get rid of them by saying, I don't wanna see the drawings anymore or add them back. If I had a position on Square, if I was holding any shares, you would see it displayed in the lower left-hand corner in like a little purple box. But if I didn't wanna see that, I could just hit the little eyeball to get rid of it. Hit it again to add it back. The crosshairs are the little lines down below the eyeball icon. And that's just gonna allow you to move these little crosshairs to see exact prices for things. And then you can just kind of like click and drag that where you want it. And then that little price box will move around with it to see the open, the high, the low, the close, and the range for that candle that you're looking at. But that pretty much wraps everything up you'll need to know about how to customize your charts inside of here. Hopefully that answers most, if not all of your questions about how to customize your charts on the Thinkorswim mobile app. We were able to cover everything from how to add studies, create drawings, and adjust the overall chart type itself. If I did miss anything or you guys have any additional questions for me, please leave them down below in the comments. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you all in the next video.